Having separate stages is beneficial while building containers and container images. Here we have uh, two stages. In the first stage, we are customizing one container based on the Node Alpine image. After having fetched the image, we create a directory inside of the image and copy our local package dependencies. Then we'll install all the dependencies in a way that they'll be ready for use afterwards. From the second stage, we are just installing an Nginx uh, server and we are copying our configuration inside of this Nginx server. Afterwards, we'll copy our local project files inside of the Nginx image. As a last step, we'll copy the dependencies from the previous stage. This way, in our final image, we'll just have the built artifacts from the first stage, as well as our local development files. This will reduce significantly the size of the end image. We can use stages to specify production and development environments. And we can do this in the same Docker file. Here we have as a base PHP Alpine image. Then we have two stages, development and production. Inside of them, we can build our development environment and production environment. The main difference between two of them at this initial stage is that in the production, we just would like to save a copy of our local files inside of the container. We have a Docker Compose file where we are building two services, PHP Dev and PHP Prod, based on the development and production stages defined in the Docker file. When we run Docker Compose up, it will build the volumes as well as those two services and it will run them. But the nice thing is that we can use those targets and build only the development environment inside of one a new container as well as the production environment inside of another container. For the whole process, we will need to have just two files, one Docker file and one Docker Compose file. Let's see how development and production containers can differ. In this example, we are running PHP and Apache server. Then we are installing additionally MySQLI extension in order to use MySQL from within PHP. In the Docker Compose file, we are having a bind mount. This means that we are binding a local directory where we are developing our files into the container. This way we can develop in our local machine and test the development inside of a container. Now we'll take a look at another example to develop locally. This time we are defining two stages, builder and base. In the builder stage, we are copying our local dependencies and then building those project dependencies inside of the container. In the second stage, we're using a pre-made PHP Apache image. We're installing additional MySQL extensions and we're using the builder stage to copy the generated dependencies into the container. Now, when we go to the Docker Compose file, we can actually target different stage at which our container will be built based on those images. In this example, we are targeting just the base stage. This means that we will save all the time rebuilding our composer and generating our uh, files. So we can do this by ourselves locally. If we don't specify target, both of the stages will pass and run and build those images. Something also interesting here is that we are defining mapping between our local project files and inside of the containers var www.html directory. We have to notice that when we do this operation, all the, our local files will overwrite what's inside of var vvhtml inside of the container. As you remember, during the builder stage, we already built our dependencies and they are saved exactly in the var www.html vendor. This means that this line will overwrite our vendor dependencies. In order to save them, we are creating a no-name or anonymous volume inside of the container. 
this way we will be preserving our container and when we are binding the local volume it will just copy the files without overwriting the vendor directory. Now let's take a look at the production Docker file. The main difference is that we will be excluding the dev dependencies where we are using Composer to build our project dependencies. And the next difference is that we are copying our local files inside of the container. Using this operation, we will save the files permanently inside of the container image. Then in the Docker Compose, we choose the base stage from which we would like to build our image. This means that uh, inside of our image, we'll place only the needed important artifacts from the previous stages. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed the information. And if you like the tutorial, you can subscribe to the channel.